you have never taken a dance class before and you are 75 years old and you like, I won't go bounce in line. Come yes. bounce in line. <laughs> it's a safe space for everybody. So Dancing Grounds was founded in March of 2020, 2012, and it was founded by Laura Stein and Jesse Donnelly, who were two women that came together basically to create more high quality dance opportunities and programming in the city in a post-Katrina New Orleans. So really seeing a void or feeling that there was a void and really looking to fill that with movement. There was one hip hop class that Laura was teaching in the very beginning and she turned her living room into a dance studio. And her kitchen was an art gallery, her backyard was a performance space, so it was really an opportunity for the community to come together to create art. Because we were in Laura's living room, kids in the community would come and like hear the music rocking and the building is shaking, the porch is shaking. And before we know it, the kids at the door like, what y'all doing? What's, what's going on here? It's like, you wanna come dance? We dancing. And Slowly, but very intentionally and authentically, the kids started to really buy into what was happening in the studio. So yeah, you know, what was happening in that Speakeasy studio in that house has really magnified and continues to carry through to be who we are right now. That's not a fair question. Right. All three of us on the schedule. Right. And all three of our classes is fine. <laughs> okay, but if I had to... If I had to have an unbiased opinion, honestly, if I had to have an unbiased opinion of the three teachers that you see sitting here, I'm gonna have to give my girl Kendra her gots. Okay. And say that that ballet class, baby, on a regular is packed. It's packed. And it's a variety of people, but a lot of black people come and take ballet. And I have to, I'm gonna give you your flowers. I believe it is the way that you approach it mm. as a black woman. It's so gentle. I've taken the chemistry class. It's beautiful. It's lovely. Happy. <laughs> okay, it's so beautiful. It's so approachable, but there's rigor. Like you're not, you're not scaling back because it's an open level class or because, you know, there's a perception of, and I feel like this happens sometimes in ballet where you enter a black space and it's like, oh, these people don't know. They're not gonna understand what this is, so I'm, I'm gonna scale back. I'm not gonna push as hard, but you don't do that. You push, <laughs> the rigor is there, and you be pushing us, and we be sweating, and it be hurting, and... Good. So that's my unbiased opinion. <laughs> my biased opinion is you should come shake with me, but yeah. <laughs> unbiased opinion, <laughs> by your mm -hmm. You know, my favorite class over the years, I think I've been coming, has been Breezy's Contemporary. Mm -hmm. That has been the one that, you know, I get in that class and yes, I'm sweating, but I'm also having this like fun choreographic moment where I can be like, ooh, I can get into that bodily emotiveness. Yeah. And so, yeah, and she's been on the schedule, you know, all yeah, these yeah. for forever and ever. So mm -hmm. it's like, I love coming back to have that, you know, good, consistent, rigorous, but also free and emotional vibe. So yeah, nice. So. Oh, yeah, well, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say I love teaching Afro grooves, um, but if I had to go to class, it would be Mama Kai. Mm. Like the rigor of an Afro modern class pushing me, making me feel warrior that's already inside of me. Yeah. I think, yeah. Okay. Mama Kai night teaches on Wednesday nights, <laughs> Afro modern, 7 to 8.15. Yes. After Mama my ballet class. Yes, come say ballet. Yes, come say ballet on Kendra. And then Afro <laughs> Our mission, we kind of have our three major buckets are advocating for social change, developing young leaders, and promoting health and wellness. Our Dance for Social Change program, um, we definitely are hoping to evolve those young people into leaders who can speak truth to power even and who yeah. can you know, use their advocacy and their art to develop, you know, that critical thinking about our society and share, you know, that with people. So that's really a huge, you know, aspect of pretty much almost everything we do kind of has this, you know, definitely it's woven in with the social justice. You know, because what's more political than like our bodies? Come yeah. on! Yeah. Uh... Than our bodies, so. Growing up in New Orleans, being in the public school system and what that experience was like, for us, compared to what kids have now, I feel like we had 
a little more agency of ourselves and space to be creative and curious and respectfully curious, you know what I mean? In, the, in a way that it was invited and appreciated and not deemed as something negative. Um, and I too taught in schools as a dance educator for a while and was that kind of outside, I'm inside, but I'm outside. Like I'm here, but I'm not here. I'm here for a little while, teach dance class, and then I'm going. But <laughs> when you come in this room, it's a safe space. Like you can, I want you to completely be yourself. I don't want you to dance like me. I want you to dance, take this and do, how, do it how you gonna do. And then when I think about the times growing up where I was in a space that was supposed to be that and that wasn't my experience, you know, I still felt like I had to, especially in dance space, look like this, be like this, mm -hmm. live like this. And as dancers, it's a part of the role, but I think what's so special about the way that we approach dance here at Dancing Grounds is that it don't have to all look the same. And there's something beautiful in each expression. Um, that always drew me to the organization, kind of like Shanice, I found it through like a little, I'm back home, where do I need to go to take a dance class? I was recovering from an injury and a friend of mine was like, oh, let's go take this Horton class in this lady's living room. And I'm like, <laughs> do you know this lady? She's like, oh, this is white lady I found on Facebook. I'm like, what? <laughs> we going well? <laughs> We go to the class. Horton is a traditional modern dance style that was widely taught in the city by predominantly black folk uh, or people of color. Because shout out Mr. Miguel Lopez, okay, okay. was a man of Latin descent. But anyway, um, it was real. It was that's my foundation. Growing up in the city, being classically trained, you had to take Horton, and I feel like Horton is one of those things that's really accessible to all people of color. The approach. Went to the class, met Laura. And Laura saw that I was a professional dancer. I was like, have you ever taught adults before? I'm like, no, I teach kids. She's like, I think you should teach adults. I'm like, I don't know, but I'll try it. I did it and I loved it. And it was so interesting how easily being an educator can translate. So already having the experience working with kids and you have to break things down for kids in a way that's digestible with very little information or time. So it was really easy to translate that to adults who maybe had never taken a dance class before, who had never thought about their pelvis being the center of the universe as we do when we bouncing and shaking and bopping, you know, it was nice. There was something uh, almost spiritual about the way that I was able to find myself as a teacher in that living room and how I wanted to share my gifts and my culture in a way that would allow me to do that wherever I went. Well, for me, I was coming home from college and wanted to be in my field. And I wanted to find a space where um, dance was popping. And this Very. is post Katrina, <laughs> right? Um, and 20, this is 2015, so I'm coming home. I reach out because Dancing Grounds pops up first. Yeah. I reached out to Laura and I literally came in for an interview and started working in schools. The kids called me into this space. They can express themselves in the ways that they want to share what's really happening, what's really going on, how can I advocate for myself. They're learning those tools here. This feels like a safe space where they can really show up authentically and advocate for what they need. And so we want to propel them in this space to go out to the world and be able to do that same thing, whether that space is created or not. I have been in this area for nine years and you know lived down the street over here for eight and a half or so. And so I've seen you know what this neighborhood and community has and I felt you know what I've wanted it to have and I think that through our leadership here you know I'm able to create what I want this neighborhood to have and help to you know feed into the community who we serve is from the K through eight all the way up to adult entry level where people are coming in they just want to feel good in their bodies all the way to professionals are coming into class the K through eight programs they're studying hip hop and they're also in contemporary classes teen program dance for social change our flagship they are discussing social dance issues what are the social issues in your community that you want to address that you feel are important and we use art as a tool to address that so they're in class every Saturday really diving in their base is modern um, and they also have some hip-hop components but they put on a festival that happens every year in like the April May June time frame 
Um, this year it is in May, so come to the Contemporary Art Center, May 15th yes. through the 19th, um, to see our young people talk about violence and why violence is impacting our our young people. And adult programming, we are in class. We are in class Monday through Friday, actually Monday through Saturday, right? Six out of seven. Teaching class called Afro Grooves, Jasmine teaches Work It Twerking, Kendra is teaching ballet. We, there are so many classes, it changes, and we want to make sure that we have New Orleans culture represented on the schedule. One of my favorite effects of what I've seen from the classes is like people coming together and like people making new friends and meeting people and being like, oh, you're gonna go to this thing afterwards. Or like people leaving class together who didn't show up together. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like the community building is such a good important part. Cause like when you come to dance class, there's an element of like vulnerability, you know, trying things and like mm -hmm. being in class and sweating together and you know, messing up in class together is really such a good bonding between people. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that's my favorite is like, you know, these two people who didn't know each other are like leaving my class giggling and talking and like, <laughs> another one. <laughs> yes, another, one. <laughs> another bond built. Yes. I think mine would have to be when they enter class and they're a little af afraid. Mm -hmm. Maybe not afraid, but like there's a little resistance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can see that in their body. And then by the end of class, they're like, thank you so much. That is what I needed and I didn't realize um, that I could just come in and do and feel and be in my body mm -hmm. and that is all I needed to allow myself, give myself permission to show up in space, I'm coming back. Yeah. That's mm. Yeah, I would say all of those things and also when it clicks for somebody in class. So especially when we're talking about when I'm teaching, my class is working toward this, so I'm teaching bounce toward New Orleans culture. And it's coming from a place of, I want you to appreciate this. And when that understanding, like if I'm explaining the origins of where the movement comes from and how it ended up in New Orleans specifically and its roots, and when that clicks for people like, oh, I never thought about that. I've never heard anybody talk about that. Or when the physical, liberation because that's what it is shaking and twerking it's about being free liberated yeah i like to tell people it's not gonna shake if you're squeezing your glutes you gotta release. let go and like ah yeah release, release your wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> and when it clicks like when people really understand what that means to be free and liberated in your body and it happens i love that moment because i feel like dancing opens portals mm. When you really like let yourself dance and like be overcome with the music, the emotion, the energy of the other people, you could really go somewhere else. And I feel like that that very small moment when it happens when somebody is twerking or shaking, I feel like it gives them a glimpse of what it means to be from here or what it means mm -hmm. to live here and be mm -hmm. a part of this community that like free. And it's so much around us, it's so much happening to us, being citizens of this land constantly. Like it's always something going on that feels like a fight, but inside of that there's always liberation and freedom. And I think when people find that in here, I'm like, another one. They coming back. <laughs> Definitely coming back. That was a spiritual experience, and now they coming back. <laughs>